When you're talking to someone that you deeply love and they want honesty, the easier thing to do would be to tell someone what you think they want to hear. The harder thing to do is to ask them the tough questions. So when you really love someone, your desire to give them something real is far stronger than satisfying them in the moment. And that's what I want to give to people when I'm taking photographs of them. I'm going to create not a photographer subject relationship, but I'm looking to create a container for them to be able to just be so that we can be together. And then I can see what's really happening, what's really real in their life. So it's not about a performance on both ends. It's not about a performance from the client and it's not about a performance from me. If I can be brave enough to show up and be open to seeing and open to new ways of seeing every single time I show up, then I could discover something extraordinary and new every single time I'm with someone. And I can gift them something that will give them a gift that I can't even describe for the rest of their lives in these photographs. And that's the most important thing. I'm not afraid to say, I don't know, or let's try this and just ask questions that bring conversations forward that actually end up giving me clues as to what's really important to them. So if you're looking to really deepen and enrich your photographic practice, then I'd say the biggest, most important thing to do is to be brave enough to come to the moment in your whole self, to be present and to be more determined to see what's real than orchestrate something that you know is a good photograph. We're not really looking for good photographs. We're looking for someone's truth. Help Me See is a podcast that redefines the word vision. Through vulnerable and real conversations, my own private introspective ramblings about the things that I think about in the wee hours of the morning, and my deep core belief that your nothingness is your everything. And all you have to do is see. I'm Bianca Mora. I'm your host. I am an educator, a photographic artist, and I believe that your daily photo habit can be the key to unlocking the ability to be more present in your everyday life and live deeper into your intention and purpose. We're not about the small talk here. Grab your coffee, get cozy. And let's talk. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. Today, I'm going to try something different. So apologies if it is painful. Um, (laughs) I am going to try to record this episode while editing a session. Um, hmm, It just dawned on me. It might be really good to screen record my editing. Maybe I should do that as well. Would you guys be interested in watching me edit? Not really sure how many photographers I have listening in versus non-photographers, but I I almost feel like the editing process is super interesting regardless. Um, Today I want to talk about meaningful photography. And I'm purposely not using the word like good, like good photography is this or but to me, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. I can't multitask. I thought it would be so cool to be able to talk about what I love to talk about while doing what I love to do. But my brain <laughs> is like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm already stopping like, and just involuntarily not talking because I just get so into the editing. And also my computer is breathing, like heaving 
with all that I'm asking it to do. I don't know if you could hear that. It's pretty funny. Okay. I'll stop editing. Okay. Here we are. Okay. So let's get back to it. I'm talking about meaningful photography. So this may be a little blunt, (laughs) but I don't really know another way to say it, but to be blunt. I think the difference between beautiful pictures and pictures that transcend, pictures that have meaning beyond what you have words for, is when the photographer is brave enough to step out of the seat of the professional, quote unquote, the professional, the one that has all the answers, the one that will tell you what to do with your hands. (laughs) I mean, that's a real thing. I don't, I've been a photographer for basically most of my life and I still don't know what to do with my hands when someone's taking a photo of me. So I get it. I get it. I get it. But all of these resources to help photographers feel comfortable so that they can in turn make their client feel comfortable, in my opinion, is really becoming an obstruction between creating something real and creating something typical. So when you find a recipe for what works for you, it's great in order to find comfort in your process and be able to hone your craft. But I feel like the slippery part is when you find so much comfort in that, that the act of photography, the session itself, um, the experience and the end product becomes this templatized generic thing. And I want to, I really want to put a strong uh, disclaimer here. I'm not, I don't judge any type of photography. I really quite literally find value in every kind of photograph like even the super old school cheesy like 80s portraits in the studio like I find value in absolutely all of it um I love myself a good cell phone photo or a bad one I love the blurry photos um I love the gorgeous lifestyle photos that look like they could be in a magazine whatever I love it all I'm coming from a place of knowing that there is a visceral, distinct difference and reaction between having photos taken of yourself or your family that are beautiful and having photos taken of your family that make you recognize something in yourself that you didn't even realize was there or have you be able to see a visual interpretation of your extreme, raw, vulnerable, deep love for each other. And to be seen, to be fully seen in that way, we have to be in an experience and in a situation where there is no fear. If I were to walk into, okay, I'll I'll use an example, actually. I was on a family shoot recently, and it was the baby's nap time, and they went to go in the nursery to try to um, get her some sleep because she's getting a little bit restless. Um, And the nursery was, like, completely dark, completely, completely, like, blackout, except for, like, the little bit of a light that was coming in from from the door. Now, if I would have 
and like, okay, I'm just going to sit down and wait versus take the picture because in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is going to be super noisy, super grainy. Uh, I don't even know if I can get the thing to focus. Um, you know, these probably aren't going to be quote unquote flattering, whatever. Um, I wouldn't have taken some of my absolute favorite photos from the shoot. And actually, surprisingly and heartwarmingly, um, one of the photos, a handful of the photos that the client was even extra excited about, I had to go into that room and experiment and not know what was going to happen and be okay with that. I had to look at the back of my screen and say, hmm, don't love the way that's looking. I wonder what I can do later in post that that should be fun or that'll be a challenge, whatever, what have you. And these pictures that were mostly in the dark became more gestural, more like a painting, super grainy, and just the ever so slight sliver of light that would wrap around different parts of their face or their hands, whatever was the outline of their body. It became such an intimate, quiet, precious situation to photograph. But I had to be open. I had to be open to seeing differently. I had never, that was the darkest room I've ever shot in ever. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> that was the darkest room I'd ever shot in a session. And some of my most favorite photographs. You know, when, when someone's uncomfortable in a session and you're looking to make them comfortable, I know that we can think that just telling them how we quote unquote know to stand or what will be flattering might, might give them relief, giving them direction might give them relief, but really think about it. If I'm uncomfortable and someone is telling me what to do and how to angle my body, I am even more so not feeling like I'm in my skin. I'm not feeling natural. So even if I become more um, visually flattering in the photograph, in my mind, in my memories, I, I'm remembering I'm not good enough as I am. So I'm going to listen to what this person's telling me to, to try to look a certain way for this image. I think that we have to look beyond the final image. Truly, the end photograph and the end gallery is not on my mind when I'm in a session. When I'm in a session, it is about being present. And whatever I can do to bring others more present into what's happening is what I'm going to do. Because that's the only way that I'll be able to see anything true. I'm scrolling through one of my last galleries while I'm talking because I know things will pop up. Oh, one of my last posts. One of my last posts I talked about. Um, so we had gone to a park and I remember she was like, where should we put the blanket down? And for a moment I was like, oh, looking, I caught myself looking for complete shade because that is um, really easy to shoot in. It's generally the most flattering. But, you know, I wanted, I asked, wh where do you usually sit? Like, where, wh where do you usually go? Because I wanted it to be as close to their, like, real life as possible. Um, we actually couldn't sit exactly where she used to sit because there was someone, there was someone there, the nerve. <laughs> um, but anyway, we ended up putting the blanket down on a patchy, like a dappily light spot. So if you're not a photographer, dappled light is like, no to most because <laughs> you'll have like uneven patches of light on someone's face and blah, 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 blah. But these pictures that I was able to take in this dappled light were utterly gorgeous. They were like little magic sunbeams of golden light popping in on this most lovable baby I've ever saw in my life. And I wouldn't have had these magical photos if I would have gone with the, the safer choice. 
So I'm not saying let's always choose the most uncomfortable thing because comfort is key. Being in your own skin and in your heart is key in a session, but I'm saying the choices that we make, if they're all out of what is the sure thing, we cannot reap the benefits and the rewards of choosing the thing that is extraordinary. The thing that we could have never even dreamed up. I say this every session that I have, that there are kids around um, in the session. And I truly, truly mean it. Their ideas (laughs) and their not listening to direction is the biggest gift. They have the most unique (laughs) and I mean, anything that they choose to do instead is perfect. It is the best thing. Even if they're sitting there crying on the floor, I'm going to photograph that because that's it too. And that's beautiful too. It might not feel beautiful in the moment. I know I've been on the other side of that, but (laughs) but it is. It really, really, really is. Photography is a whole visual language that I feel like isn't the benefits. I don't know if that cheapens it. I don't even want to say benefits. The The gift of what this medium can give you, I feel like is so overlooked and so misunderstood. Um, I think it's just looked past. When you're talking to someone that you deeply love and they're in a situation and they want honesty, The easier thing to do would be to tell someone what you think they want to hear. The harder thing to do is to ask them the tough questions, right? So when you really love someone, your desire to give them something real is far stronger than satisfying them in the moment. And that's what I want to give to people when I'm taking photographs of them. My desire to show them something true and real about their life overrides any shot that I had in mind that I wanted to take um, because I don't want it to sacrifice an experience or, um, you know, if they're craving direction from me, the type of direction I give them, odds are, other than I look over here and turn a little bit this way, other than that, it might be frustrating for them, (laughs) but I'm going to continue to turn them inward. I'm going to continue to create not a photographer subject relationship, but I'm looking to create a container for them to be able to just be so that we can be together. And then I can see what's really happening, what's really real in their life. So it's not about a performance on both ends. It's not about a performance from the client and it's not about a performance from me. If I can be brave enough to show up and be open to seeing and open to new ways of seeing every single time I show up, then I could discover something extraordinary and new every single time I'm with someone. And I can gift them something that will give them, I mean, I don't even give them a gift that I can't even describe for the rest of their lives in these photographs. And that's the most important thing. I'm not afraid to say, I don't know, or let's try this in a session and just ask questions that bring conversations forward that actually end up giving me clues as to what's really important to them that they didn't even realize to bring up as an option to take photographs of. So if you're looking to really deepen and enrich your photographic practice in your own life as a non-professional or in your professional practice with families or people or whatever you do, then I'd say the biggest 
most important thing to do is to be brave enough to come to the session, to the moment in your whole self, to be present and to be more determined to see what's real than orchestrate something that you know is acceptable or surefire or um, something that will get you praise, you know, because you took a, a good photograph. We're not really looking for good photographs. We're looking for someone's truth. Now, yes, of course, um, it's easier to say that when you have a bunch of experience and, um, you know, well, whatever, uh, equipment, this or that. But it is my 1000% belief that the tools that you use don't matter. You can take the most amazing photographs with very, very low key tools. Some of my favorite photographs are on my cell phone. Anyone can learn the technical skill to make a quote unquote technically pretty picture. So once you get to the point where you're satisfied with your output, with when you feel confident that you can take a photograph and make it look good in the moment or in post, whatever it is, that level of satisfaction can be enough until you feel constrained by it. There's a bajillion things that you could learn in terms of your camera and your editing and uh, blah, blah, blah. Just learn enough. Just learn the sliver that you need to know to be able to produce something that you feel good about and then explore the experience. That is so much more important. The technical side of things will organically and slowly and quickly improve over time naturally. And if it's not, you could always stop and do more concentrated study in that area. But more than anything else, if you are able to do the inside work to show up powerfully in a session, then your photographs will be powerful. I am curious on if this resonates with you or if this makes sense to you. Um, this is really present in my mind right now because I'm working on a course all about this and about creating with purpose and with meaning. And um, if you have something to add to this conversation or you have questions or you want to stay in the loop of whenever, whenever the hell I finish this, um, <laughs> this course, um, I've had a lot of shoots recently. So it's taking me a little bit longer than I anticipated to, to get this course done. But, um, if you're curious about it, click the link in the show notes and just sign up so that you'll be able to know when it's launching and all that good stuff. But, um, that's it. I just really, I mean, I could cry. <laughs> I could cry just talking about it, but I believe so deeply in this practice and it makes me really sad that the richness and the the gifts that could be flourishing every time someone opts to have their photo taken or um you know as they overlook over their photos that they've taken and don't really pay attention to what it is that they're doing consciously it's just a huge it's a huge missed opportunity for 
seeing the richness and the abundant life that you're living and to really connecting with others in a profound way rather than a transactional, um, you know, performing a service way. When I photograph families, it's that it's my absolute favorite. Um, and I meet these families and they, I leave a piece of my heart with them. It sounds cheesy. I think, I don't know. I don't care. Um, but I mean, even now I'm like looking, scrolling through this gallery and I stopped. And as I'm talking, I'm just staring into a portrait of one of these mamas. And I feel like I've known her for so long. And we spent one short afternoon together. And I just spent a lot of time looking at her while editing. And I really care about this person. <laughs> and I don't even know I'm laughing. I'm, I think I'm like emotional laughing right now. Um, but yeah, I just, there's so much. And I know that the desire to produce something for someone when you're taking photographs of someone that they will think is beautiful, that they will like is so strong and it's pure and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just reframing it into this knowing of, I can give you something so much more. It just requires me to be brave enough to let down my guard so you can let down your guard. I hope this made sense or some semblance of sense. <laughs> anyway, um... So on the, ooh, on the day I'm releasing this recording, it's my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm recording this the day before. And yeah, I'm turning 33. I've stopped understanding how old I am since I was like 17. I don't, I, I've, I'm done. I don't know. It kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> but sometimes I'm asked to write down how old I am or someone asks me and I le legitimately forget. I think they think I'm lying or something, but I really, I don't know. Do, does that happen to you? You ever feel like, how old am I? Like I have had to do the thing where I'm like 2022 minus 1989 <laughs> is <laughs> anyway. Okay. I'm going to get going. Um, I want to get back to editing. <laughs> I have the itch and I have another 40 minutes between before uh, picking up my son. Uh, right now I'm actually editing a senior portrait session, which, uh, I don't do that often, but that session was incredible. I feel like this young woman that I met was like <laughs> me at that age. She was into so many of the things that I was into and we just had so much fun and I took pictures of her by a bathroom wall and in a river and on a hike and in dirt and <laughs> and these portraits look like portraits they don't have to look like senior portraits they can just look like her I love that all right. Wow. I'm going to stop talking now. I just can't, I, I just can't stop talking to myself. I think it's because I'm talking about one of the most important things to me and I can't shut up. Okay. I will let you go. I hope you have a beautiful week. This fall weather has been life giving for me and I hope that you're enjoying it as well. And I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode and want to get in on actual conversations with me, join the Help Me See podcast private Facebook group. Every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be hopping on live for Q&A on the latest episode and for free consulting if you need a bit of help thinking about ways to save your memories. Did you get something out of this episode? I really, really, really hope you did. And I would love to hear from you. I'm on a mission to empower you to feel peace knowing that you're not missing your life. 
One of the best ways that you can support me is leaving a review. And honestly, I'd rather hear about the memory you saved because of this podcast rather than any kind of accolade. Tell me how this podcast has impacted you. And one, I'll probably cry. (laughs) And two, I'd love to give you a shout out on the show. Take a minute and head out to the link in the bio to write a review now on the podcast.